Hello and welcome to Link Ahead, the City of Dublin podcast. When you think of Dublin, what color comes to mind? Are you even asking this question? It has to be green for all kinds of reasons. Yes, green is our color, but Dublin is green. We've said it many times here and you see it all around. And we are continuing to strive to be one of the most green, sustainable cities in the world. And to do that, it takes leadership, effort, great buy-in from our citizens, and importantly, partnerships. And boy, do we have a great one with the Solid Waste Authority of Central Ohio, also known as Swaco. And today, Hannah Greer-Brown, Swaco's Director of Communications, is here with us. So welcome to Link Ahead, Hannah. Thanks so much for having me, Lindsay and Bruce. I'm excited to be here and talk about all the ways we can recycle right here in Dublin. Oh, wonderful. So let's begin with a little history and your mission. Swaco is actually one of 52 solid waste districts created by the Ohio General Assembly in 1989. The mission then and now was to reduce reliance on landfills, right? That's right. And we are really passionate about helping residents and businesses reduce their reliance on the landfill, which we also happen to own. Um, And that's one of the things that makes us really unique. Swaco is the only solid waste authority in the state of Ohio to own and operate a municipal solid waste landfill. Now, why is that important? For a couple of reasons. So first, it gives us a really unique look at the waste stream. Not only can we monitor what's coming to the landfill and then design programs to help divert that material from the landfill, the public ownership of the landfill also helps to keep costs low and efficient for partners like the city of Dublin. Gotcha. So how much is thrown away every year and what type of stuff do you receive? Oh my gosh, we get over a million tons of material at the county landfill every year. That's coming from local residents' homes, but also schools and businesses. And the number one material that we see, of course, this is by weight, are food scraps. Right. So we're getting a million tons of food, or I'm sorry, a million pounds of food every single day. When you think about that, the local, you know, general family, family of four here in central Ohio is spending about $2,000 on food every year that they purchase but sadly never eat. They simply throw it out. It's all those salads we buy and don't eat. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but when you say tons of food, like, can you put that in terms of like, you know, X number of tonnage equals X number of skyscrapers or something (laughs) like that I can can relate to? Yeah, I mean, so we like to think about food as a resource, right? So Um, It takes a lot of natural and financial resources to grow and harvest and transport the food to our dinner plates. So uh, to try to answer your question, I can share that we're spending or we're using about 40 billion gallons of water every year to grow food that comes to central Ohio that is thrown away. Oh, Wow. wow. That is a lot of water. So where does all this material come from that comes to you? So the large majority of it come from the commercial sector. So think of your local businesses, but also your schools and other commercial settings. 60% of that material is coming from those locations. And about 40% comes from local households in central Ohio. Well, we're so happy to have you here during Earth Month. So let's dive into that here. What is the number one thing people could do to improve their personal or family recycling at home? Absolutely. Simply recycling correctly is key to recycling. (laughs) So not only that, we also want people to recycle everything they can every time they recycle. So we partner with you on a great program called Recycle Right, which includes a really awesome search tool on your website. Can you tell us more about this program? Recycle Right was developed um, probably about eight years ago and really uh, has a mission to help uh, residents and families here in central Ohio have the confidence that they need to know how to recycle correctly and to give them the tools to be able to do that. So in our residential recycling program, there are five categories of materials that are accepted. So all of your household paper and cardboard, your metal cans, your glass bottles and jars, your plastic bottles and jugs, and your carton containers. So like those things that soup broth might come in or even juice boxes would be considered a carton container. Everything else needs to be kept out of the curbside recycling program. Doesn't mean there isn't an opportunity to recycle it, just means you got to find the right uh, outlet for it, which is where that search tool that you mentioned comes into play. If you go to RecycleRate.org, find the reuse and recycle search tool, you can probably find an outlet for something that you have at home that doesn't belong in the recycling cart, but can still be recycled or reused. Quick follow-up to soup cans, and I've been wondering about this because of contamination. Are you supposed to rinse out soup cans and things like that? 
Yeah, it's always a good practice just to give it a quick rinse. You don't want to spend a lot of time washing these items just because then you're expending another natural resource of water to clean them. Um, but if you're, you know, maybe doing your dishes by hand, you've got some hot soapy water left in the sink, go ahead and throw those recyclables in there, give them a quick rinse, then put them in the recycling cart. Right. And um, it's more than just a search tool for yard clippings and plastic bottles. Um, you've got guidelines for recycling everything from broken ceramics to pol political yard signs. If a person can't find, you know, the answer they're looking for, can they call Swaco and say, hey, can I recycle this? Absolutely. They can call us. Uh, our telephone number is 614-871-5100. They can also find us on social media at Swaco underscore green. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So we'd be happy to answer questions. Um, we also have a really cool chat bot feature on our website at Swaco.org. So uh, you can also go there and type in your question and our uh, technology, our AI chat bot might return an answer for you. Nice. Uh, let's dive a little deeper into that recycling bin. What is the diversion rate? So Central Ohio's diversion rate exceeds the national average, which is something to be really kind of proud of and excited about. Uh, we're at 54% as of 2022. Okay. Good wow. news there. And I know we kind of already talked about this, but just kind of broadly, what are the do's and don'ts of recycling? Yeah, so we talked about those five categories of materials that are accepted for recycling. Um, what's equally important is knowing what not to do. So you never want to bag your recyclables. And that's because when those materials get put in a trash bag or one of those uh, grocery sacks that you're reusing, and they make their way to the material recovery facility, a lot of times they're just kind of pulled off the line and sent to the landfill. And so all of that good effort that you put into separating and collecting those materials really goes to waste when you bag recyclables. Those bags cause big problems for that material recovery facility. They are a stretchy film plastic and they tangle in that technology and that equipment that's sorting our recyclables and it creates down, downtime at the plants and just leads to increased costs for all of us to be able to recycle. So making sure you know not to bag your recyclables, but also Keeping things like batteries and sharps um, or needles out of recycling uh, are, is really important, too, because those items are dangerous. They sure. can lead to fires. They also pose risk for the recycling facility workers. Wow. And another thing I remember seeing on every handout we've done with Swake over the years <laughs> is metal hangers. I see that. I think that might cause a lot of problem at the facility. Yes. <laughs> hangers, wires, cords, hoses, all of those things are also called, um, thought of as tanglers, just like the plastic bags. So they get caught up in that equipment and they are a big no-no. That's why I, don't, I fold everything, Lindsay. I don't want to use <laughs> hangers at all. So sorry, Hannah. Are, are there items being added to the list pretty frequently? And are there any items that are taken off of the recycled list? Well, good news is no. No items have been taken off the list in recent years. The other good news is that, yes, items are being added uh, frequently. So uh, for many years, uh, we weren't able to recycle plastic tubs like butter containers right. or hummus containers. A couple of years ago, Rumpke, who operates the main re uh, material recovery facility here in central Ohio, uh, where virtually all of our household materials go, regardless of who's picking up your recycling at the curb, they added those items to the list of accepted items. And so we're optimistic that with the opening of their new material recovery facility later this summer, even more items will be accepted at that location. So yeah. we, we chow down on a lot of raspberries and strawberries yeah. <laughs> in our house. So we have those clamshell containers. Uh, yes. What is the deal with the clamshell containers? I mean, the clamshells are on everybody's radar. We all want to be able to recycle them. Sadly, we can't currently recycle those curbside. But again, let's remain optimistic. I do think they might be something that gets added to the list in the near future. One more question, because it was a re really big deal when we started to be able to recycle cups. And um, I, at one time, I know you could you could recycle, you know, like a coffee cup, but not the coffee lid. Is that still the case? That is still the case. So when it comes to cup recycling, which is another kind of recently added item, you can recycle plastic cups, metal cups, and paper cups. But when it comes to paper coffee cups, you've got to leave the plastic lid off. Okay. Well, Hannah, you may not know this about Bruce and me, but we're a little competitive. A little bit, a little bit. So how does Central Ohio fare compared to the rest of the state um, with, with things like our diversion rate? 
I mean, Central Ohio is doing a great job. We are diverting more than half of the materials that we're generating, which is something we can all feel really great about. Um, I think that um, probably puts us kind of at the top or near the top of the list when you look at other Central Ohio communities. But certainly our population is growing in Central Ohio, and so we've got a lot of work to do to make sure people that are relocating or moving here know what's accepted for recycling and that we help everyone think about not just recycling and throwing things away properly, but reducing the amount of waste we generate in the first place is going to go a long way to extending the life of the landfill and making us a more sustainable green community. Okay, more competitive questions here. So like <laughs> big cities get a lot of attention. I know San Francisco is really drives the business community to recycle. Portland is leading with youth education. Seattle leads in compost. And I remember being a kid going to New York and my mom, my grandma would have its blue can day. It was red can day. And this was back in the 80s and they were recycling stuff. So where has Central Ohio carved out a, a leadership role? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think we are being looked at as a leader, especially around our efforts to divert food waste from the landfill. You know, we recently had a visit from both the New York Times and the NBC Nightly News, oh, blessed wow. or hold. Yeah. <laughs> they came to check out our recycling program, our food waste diversion program. And really, I think that is a credit to the fact that Central Ohioans come together when an issue is facing our community. And Swaco has been really pleased to be able to convene more than 100 partners around the issue of food waste. And the city of Dublin certainly has been at the table for those conversations. We've got schools, we've got retailers, we've got grocery stores, restaurants, everybody working together to divert food waste from the landfill. So I think we are forging a path there and a lot of communities across the United States are looking to us as a leader in this space. So Hannah, can recycling efforts extend the life of the Franklin County landfill? And speaking of that, I'm wondering how much of a lifespan does it have left? Yeah, so there is only one municipal solid waste landfill here in central Ohio. That's the Franklin County landfill owned by Swaco. There are about 42 years of life left on that landfill if nothing changes. So if we continue to consume materials at the rate we are today and recycle at the rate we are today. So we're really focused um, on being a good steward of that public asset and helping residents think about reducing the amount of waste they create. But when waste does occur, how can we recycle it? What are the opportunities to keep that material out of the landfill? And then certainly when it makes its way to the landfill, we take great pride in making sure that it's disposed of in a way that protects both the public's health, but also the environmental's health, environmental health of the community. Another topic to, to hit that flies under the radar is all the work that you do in schools, you know, school tours, education outreach, grant programs. I remember my kids going to Swaco <laughs> and coming back the next day and just being like, this was awesome. So I know, I know that you've, you've, you guys hit on all that stuff. So, you know, can you talk a little bit about some of those topics that you guys do? I mentioned we consider the landfill an asset. We want people to come and see it. We work with thousands of school children every year to bring them into the landfill. We give them an educational presentation about how landfills are constructed. You know, they are kind of engineering mar model marvels. They're no longer big holes in the ground that you used to think of uh, many generations ago. They're now highly engineered and very sophisticated operations. So we take kids in, we take them in a school bus, take them through there, um, show them all the different things that we do that are best in class in our landfill, um, and that really are focused on um, you know, protecting the public's health and the quality of the community around us. So yes, we welcome people to sign up for a tour. We offer those for um, schools, as I mentioned, but also every quarter we invite the public to come out on a Saturday and tour the landfill. Um, and we've got a lot of just kind of good educational resources that parents can use at home with their kids just right on our website. Uh, you can take paper and turn it into cool little bracelets or superhero cuffs. So there's all kinds of information on the website. Wow. I saw Bruce's eyes get really big with the superhero. <laughs> Another thing Swaco does is your grant program. And we here in Dublin have been the beneficiaries of that. Uh, I know you were just at city council a few weeks ago, uh, awarding us a grant for um, expanded recycling at Emerald Fields Park. Talk a little bit about the grants and why that's important. Swaco owns the landfill, um, but we really cannot increase the diversion of material away from the landfill without all of our partners working together. And so um, we want to make it as easy and convenient as partners for uh, as easy and convenient for our partners as possible. And so we offer grant funding for recycling or waste diversion uh, or waste reduction programs. So the uh, example here in Dublin was a really exciting one. We're excited to see that recycling opportunity expand to those sports uh, 
uh, facilities, but any community or nonprofit or even school that's interested in partnering with us to get some funding to start up a program or expand a program they have in place can apply for grant funding. Every April, we open that application process. We accept applications for many months, and then we award probably about $200,000 every year to about 15 grant recipient partners. All right, everyone, it's April, so you got a couple weeks That's to get it. those get grant in. applications in. in. <laughs> So speaking of young people, and this may be anecdotal, but do you get the sense that millennials, Gen Zs are especially tuned into the environment and recycling, or does that issue cross all demographics fairly and equally? Well, I do think they are very tuned in, and in, in particular, they're looking for work in that environment. They, they want to feel good about um, the work that they're doing and the way that their employer thinks about the environment and, and takes steps to protect the environment. So I think that's really a rallying ca- cry for our local business community to put ESG goals in place or think about sustainability because it really is a workforce attraction uh, piece. But similarly, I, I know my grandmother considered herself probably one of the original recyclers. So I do think recycling and and being mindful of reuse spans all generations and Uh, really is kind of an important topic no matter how old you are. Uh, Hannah, earlier you mentioned that 60% of waste comes from commercial properties. We have a booming business community here, over 3,200 businesses from small one-person shops to big corporate partners that employ thousands. How does Swaco help businesses of all sizes customize their recycling programs? Yeah, we love working with businesses, and that really is kind of a high priority for us this year. We have a number of incentives available to businesses who want to start or expand recycling programs. We can help them audit their waste stream to understand what's actually being thrown away. We can help them find a hauler who can take away both their recyclables but also their trash service and make sure that those contracts are right size for their business and their operations. We also um, have all kinds of signage available on our website that you can customize and print and hang in your office so that you're collecting the cleanest stream of recyclables possible. Uh, So there's a lot of opportunity to participate with Swaco through our Business Recycling Champions Program to, you know, put recycling and waste diversion activities in place in your office. So what's your advice for us and others on the government side? Well, Take a look at the grant program, which you guys have, have done, of course. We have um, our best people on that. We do. Yes, we do. We really do. And, you know, participating in our Recycle Right program is, is I think, uh, a really great way to reach residents and families at home know about what's able to be recycled. We offer webinars. So that's a free resource available to residents here in Dublin who, or even business owners who would want to learn more about recycling or speak with somebody at Swaco directly. We'd encourage them to go to Swaco.org and look at that list of webinars and and join us. We always have plenty of time for Q&A at the end of those. So a quick uh, trend question. I've been noticing at more of these fast casual restaurants where, you know, you have several bins, not just one for trash, but they'll have a trash bin, a recyclable bin, and a compostable bin. Um, Do you think that that's going to continue to catch on? I do. I think as uh, as consumers, we're asking for that. We want to frequent establishments where we can feel good about what's happening with our waste and we can leave a low um, kind of footprint, environmental footprint. So I do think that's going to continue to catch on and really do applaud all of the businesses that have already begun doing that. So as we start to wrap up, wrap up our conversation, let's come back to the calendar. So Sustainable Saturday in Dublin is coming up on May the 4th. Uh, this year. And it's a it's more than just a, a paper shredding event because that's what's what it was for the longest time. Document <laughs> Destruction Day is now Sustainable Saturday. Yes. That was our big catchphrase last year. So you're partnering with us to include household hazardous waste as well. So what do residents need to know about that part? So HHW or household hazardous waste really includes all of those things that say a danger, or warning, flammable, caution. So if you've got something like that in your garage or your basement, it is eligible to be um, brought to this HHW. What if you have a can that has no <laughs> visible markings on it whatsoever? Can we bring that in? Sure, you can bring it down okay. and we'll check it out all for right, you. Thank you. So we're really looking for all of that used motor oil. Uh, maybe you have turkey fryer grease left over from Thanksgiving. Bring that. We'll take that. Uh, all of the latex or spray paints that you might have that you're no longer using, bring those down. The one thing I'll mentioned water-based paints are not toxic and if they can be brought to the event we do charge a small fee a dollar per gallon to collect those but really the best thing to do with uh, just your typical household water-based paint is to take the lid off put some kitty litter or sawdust in it let it dry out and then toss it in your household garbage 
Yeah, I, thank you for saying that. I did not know that. <laughs> I, I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions um, and maybe one of the reasons that the um, household hazardous waste event is so popular. People think, oh, I've got all these paint cans. I'm going to get them out of my garage. And really, if it's water-based paint, then you can just kind of let that dry out and put that curbside. That's so correct. So that's nice. And so Sustainable Saturday is May 4th. 8 to 1 p.m. at the Dublin Service Center. In addition to household hazardous waste, you can bring your documents to be destructed. You can also bring uh, clothing, curtains, drapes, jewelry, small appliances, um, your compostables, um, styrofoam, pretty much everything. So we've really expanded this event to be a one-stop shop. Um, And, you know, with the popularity of our document destruction day and now teaming up with household hazardous waste, it's going to be a really big event. So we're excited for that. Uh, well, Hannah, you have been at Swaco since 2015. What would you say is the most impressive change you've seen in our community um, o- over your tenure? Oh, gosh, that's such a hard question to answer. I just I, I've seen great progress and improvement just in terms of our community prioritizing sustainability. You know, when I started at Swaco back in 20, I guess, uh, 17, 16, 17, our recycling rate was only about 34%. Oh, wow. So we've come a long That's way. Impressive. That's impressive. Yeah. The other thing we have done, begun to do a really good job of just gathering data and backing up um, just all of the work that we're doing, making sure that it is backed up by data and research um, because we think it presents a really compelling case and helps us make our business case when we're out talking with partners. Awesome. All right, Hannah, you have done a great job answering all of our questions (laughs) so far. I I emphasize so so far. far. (laughs) We end every episode with rapid fire. So when you're ready, we're going to do this. You ready? I think she's ready. I'm ready. (laughs) All right. What's the strangest thing you've recycled? Oh, my gosh. I recycle everything. I don't know if any of it's very strange, but um, certainly I encounter things around my house that uh, I have to do a little research for. Um, I would say it's not strange, but I probably go to Goodwill or VOA every weekend. My trunk's full of a couple of things that I need to drop off there. So, Okay. The Earth Day theme this year is conserving every ecosystem, caring for every creature. I'm curious, what's your favorite ecosystem and your favorite creature? (laughs) Well, I'll start with creatures because that's easy. So I've got two um, kind of teenage boys at home who are animal (laughs) lovers. So we've pretty much had every creature under the sun. Um, A couple of years ago, we raised six ducks. And that was really fun to do. And, um, you know, when, when they were grown, they flew off and (laughs) no longer kind of uh, revisited us, but that was a really fun thing and highly recommend that. And your favorite ecosystem? Probably something with water. I love being near either a lake or the ocean. Um, So my kids and I like to spend a lot of time just kind of learning about underwater ecosystems. Very cool. All right. Upcycling is big now too, where people take something and turn it into something else. What is your favorite thing to upcycle? I love to upcycle clothing from my sister's closet. (laughs) It's new to me that she's kind of overwearing. So perfect. It's always a favorite. Well, we spoke to Swaco a few years ago and learned about wish cycling. So assuming that's still a problem, what is the most common item you see people throw in the recycling bin that they should not? I think it's probably those clamshell containers that we all want to recycle (laughs) and we think we'll just put it in the curbside cart and somebody else will deal with it. Maybe it'll get recycled. (laughs) We really just shouldn't be doing that right now. Okay. So PSA time. Tell us why that's a problem. Well, there's no end market for it currently. And so when all of that material gets collected, it's taken to the material recovery facility where it's sorted. And there just isn't a buyer for that clamshell, that rigid plastic currently. So again, we're optimistic markets are growing and changing and that'll be profitable for our haulers and and recyclers to be able to collect and sell that material. When you're in Dublin, do you have a favorite lunch or dinner spot? You guys, I do. <laughs> right. I just recently went to Valentina's. Oh, it's so my good. parents. Nice. Oh, nice. It was delicious. The, the ambiance was beautiful. The service was great. And the food was top notch. So I can't wait to get back. <laughs> yes, that's been a great addition to downtown Dublin. Okay, truth time. What do you do when you see someone chuck a recyclable into the waste bin? I fish it out. And I've got a a very quick but funny story. I was at a cookout a couple of years ago where, um, you know, the aluminum foil that a lot of times people grill with 
gentleman kept putting it in his household recycling bin and he was a good friend of mine and I just kept taking it out and putting it in the trash <laughs> and he kept unbeknownst to me he took it out of the trash and put it back in recycling so there was like this silent battle That's being funny. waged the course of the the cookout so oh. so again PSA dirty aluminum foil needs to go in the trash it can't be recycled All right. Well, Hannah Greer Brown, thank you so much for joining us, Link Ahead. You have been a wealth of great information. Thank you both. And happy Earth Month. Happy Earth Month. Happy Earth Month. And to our listeners, thank you as well for taking the time to connect with your city. Tune in next time as we continue to explore the many personalities and experiences that make Dublin a thriving place to live, work, and grow.